Hello everyone and welcome back to EU4. I'm Lord Farm and here with a guide on France. This is an updated one to my guide that's I think about three years old now. So uh, this is with the Emperor uh, update patch um, and uh, France has changed drastically since before it so I figured I'd remake some of my guides. So the big change to France obviously is now France has several vassals. Uh, basically they have a miniature vassal swarm of their own, which comes in really handy. Um, basically gives you 18 more troops to use in your wars. But I find the French start now is actually harder than it was before. Mainly the initial war against England gets really tricky. So starting out with France, France is probably, in my opinion, the most balanced of all countries in terms of their ideas. They got manpower, diplomatic reputation, Diplomatic relations, which is very good. Elan, plus 20 morale, plus 10 national tax modifier. They also have reduced um, native uprising and native assimilation, which means you can go with the native trading policy when you colonize. They got Vauban fortifications. Now we have 20% fort maintenance. Doesn't sound huge, but by the late game, you should have high level forts, and that will make a big difference. Now uh, you got negative 10 tech cost, which is really handy. And you get plus two tolerance of heathens and heretics, which means if you go, basically you're tolerant of all religions, at least moderately. If you swap to Protestantism and go uh, declaration of indulgence, you'll be completely tolerant of Catholics um, and any of the other faiths. So you can actually go reformed as well. Um, you'll be completely tolerant of all the Christian faiths, which is really handy, especially in Europe during the second and third ages where religion is a big issue but anyway jumping into it france starts surrounded by enemies um one of your always enemies is basically always going to be england so i suggest you rival them immediately because you've got claims on their provinces actually cores uh you're going to want to reget the regain those as fast as possible you're the fifth great power, but once you win that initial end of the Hundred Years' War, you should probably shoot up to second or third. You'll replace England, who starts slightly more developed than you, but you have more development in your subjects as well. So for allies, I recommend you probably ally uh, Castile. Um, ally them, royal marriage them. Uh, there is a mission down your mission tree to um, take them over at some point. Um, but that is so far buried into your mission tree, you won't have to worry about that for about 100 years. So feel free to ally them. They're going to be one of your better allies. Um, more importantly, they mean that your southern border is pretty much protected. Aragon can't really fight Castile um, and you at the same time, so you can by and large ignore them. Sometimes you can ally Aragon as well, uh, but if they've rivaled Castile, Castile is the better one in the long run because they're likely to get the Iberian Union. Um, outside of that, an uh, important thing to remember is Portugal is allied to England, so your wars against them are going to involve Portugal. Other allies that are pretty good, you start off allied with Provence, which is good, and you'll notice we're already over our diplomatic relations. There are some ways around that. First off, you can revoke your guarantee on Scotland, unless you want to use them versus the English. I wouldn't recommend it, because unless your army's in Scotland, they will always lose to England. So many times what I will do is revoke the guarantee on them, which gets me to my even diplomatic relation slots, which is higher than normal because the French start out with the French strong duchies, plus three diplomatic relations and negative 10 liberty desire. This is really good. This is like one of the better ones. Almost all countries now have an estate interaction that gives them plus two diplomatic relations, but the French get three and they get liberty desire reduction. You're going to want to keep this most of the game. Um, you do have a mission tree to actually get rid of it. If you do, I recommend putting it back on uh, once you do that mission because it's really useful. Uh, it's one of the better ones in the game. Uh, also, another good ally in the long run, if you're going to stay Catholic, is to ally the Pope. The last thing you want to do is be excommunicated. Other than that, uh, you can also ally Milan. There is a chance that when this guy dies, um, you can get a union over them. Um, you also sometimes will get a mission, or not a mission, a claim, a restoration of union on them, which sounds nice. Until you remember they're part of the HRE, so if you attack them, Austria will defend them. So by and large, ignore that event. Um, 
What else do you need to know for starting? Okay, so France starts out with only a third of its manpower, which is rather strange, I assume, to represent the ongoing Hundred Years' War. So the first thing you're going to want to do, and I, I'm serious, I've run this start like five times, you're going to want to pass increased levies, plus 50% national manpower modifier on top of your 20s. It's going to give you some insane amount of manpower. And you're going to want that because the initial war versus England is going to be very rough. Um, I actually struggled with it a little bit. The other thing you're going to want to do is start raising troops immediately. I recommend just raise infantry by and large for your southern army. That's where your most of the fighting is going to take place. Your northern army should be able to hold off against any English landings. And that goal of this army is more just to take these two forts up here in Calais and Cain and then just occupy this region. So, um, kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself, but uh, that's really the starting moves for France here. You're gonna wanna put the uh, Jean Beru here, who's the siege specialist in charge of your Northern army, because you want to use him to take these forts faster. Whereas the Southern one, you can put Jean Dunois, I think is how you pronounce it, in charge of the Southern army. He's not as good as at siege, but he's just as good almost of a command general. And his job with these new troops and your vassals is to hold off Portugal and England until the northern region is sieged. Because this is a trick that many new players will not do. You actually want to attack England. You do not want to have the Surrender of Maine's event fire. This is really key because if you attack them, you can get the land back from them. Uh, cheaper than if you do a defensive war and you do return course. <clears throat> um, when you attack, uh, you probably want to make... Sorry about that. You probably want to make uh, Bordeaux down here your war goal for return because it's the highest value one. Um, the odds of you actually being able to occupy it and continue to occupy it are also higher than these other ones because England will keep shipping over troops. And your navy um, down here is pathetic compared to the English, and you're not going to succeed. So I recommend you wait, and hopefully England doesn't ally someone like Austria or even Burgundy early on. And you attack them as soon as the game allows you to attack them. In the meantime, you should set your other rivals. Austria is a historical rival, so you'll never be able to ally them. And Burgundy is usually a good one to rival. If you're worried about Burgundy attacking you during you're basically the Hundred Years' War. Uh, ally the Pope, that tend to dissuade them from attacking you, I found. Uh, and then you want to go into your subjects, and you ideally you want to change what they're doing. Uh, Orleans has the largest army, so letting them do whatever they want is probably good. But some of these other ones, you probably want to put them to supportive. Um, just so that their armies don't keep wandering off and getting killed. Uh, because you're going to be the main enemy of this reconquest war against England is not going to be so much England. Although if they get their full army onto your lands, uh, the odds of you winning the war go down drastically. Um, you're better off trying to wait until you see their troops landing and then marching the army into the province they're going to land, stack wiping them. And that's what this army's for: is to control the north. Once you do that, you should be good. Down south, the issue is obviously going to be Portugal. Portugal starts out with 15 troops and we'll get a few more. That's why we are raising all these troops down here so you can equal them. Uh, another thing you can do is you can do allow friendly units to attach, which means that six of these guys might join yours. Together with your general, you can easily win. Uh, other things to do, I recommend you go in and develop one of your provinces, probably Paris, use a Diplo level. That will get you to even Crownland, 30, so you won't have that penalty. Uh, I probably want to summon the Diet here, see what their criteria is. You, ideally, you want to take one that gives you production. Um, that's a production-based one, so Diplomacy, the Burgers, because they usually give you money, and money early on is really useful. So this one, base production of at least 7, that's not bad. You're going to want to develop it anyway. And of course, Diplo is the least important of ideas. Uh, you're also going to want to go in and give uh, monopolies to people. Um, most people underestimate this. It's very good. You want to go in and basically you want to hand over control of most of your trade stuff. Um, 
the long term goal is to get these plus one monthly diplo admin and military power going, but you can't do that without losing um, crownland. You want to get to 40 crownland before you pass one, and then 40, then it'll drop you to 30, and then you go to 40 again and you do it again. You can do it all at once, I don't recommend it. Uh, another thing you might want to pass on the bourgeoisie is the patronage of the arts. Hurts your tax, which is already going to be hurt pretty badly by the increased levies. But if you're having trouble with prestige, that will help. Probably don't want to pass it immediately. And at some point, you're going to want to do a private trade fleet so you can build some light ships. But you want to go through and you want to do all these monopolies. Uh, actually, you don't want to do one of these monopolies because you do want to save space for the monthly military power later on. That should probably be either your first or your second one. Uh, you, I tend to go for the plus one monthly admin early on um, just because that helps quite a bit uh, with coring stuff. But since France, your initial war is going to be a reconquest, you might want to get the military power. So anyway, as you'll see, I've already got about 350 gold. And I can raise five more troops if I want to. I think I can even support that many, yeah, roughly. And uh, if you do that, you should have a considerably stronger army. Obviously, you won't be able to replenish any casualties, but that's why we did the increased levies. Those two combined should be good. You're also going to want to use your uh, vassals' manpower because they actually have more manpower than you do, which is kind of funny. Thirty amp. Uh, and that's the initial war against England. And once you win the war against England, the key is the peace deal. You do not want to take all their land in France, and you want to get into the British Isles. I recommend trying to kill off England before you try and expand anywhere else in Europe. Just because trying to kill England late game with their fleet is a pain. Plus, this is like 500 or so development that almost no one's ever going to attack again. And England's got good land. Between England and France, your terrain is some of the best developing land in the world. You could literally just sit on England and France and be the largest and strongest and richest nation in the world without much issue. They're really good. A lot of farmlands, a lot of grasslands. So... Once you've won the war with England, what you do want to do is you want to take specific provinces from England. You want to take this province here. You want to take, at minimum, these two provinces, because otherwise Castile tends to try and take them. Uh, you need to take Maine, and you want to take this province as well. So basically, you want to make sure that nobody borders England in France directly, because Provence has a core on this as well. And I've noticed if England gets too weak, Brittany will start to invade them as well. But the reason you take this province is to prevent Burgundy from invading. Uh, if you can, you want to take Calais, but I don't think you'll have enough war score. Because the other one you want to take is Pale. Now, a lot of people go, why do you want to take this province? Well, it gives you a province in Ireland. And France is strong enough you can conquer Ireland while recovering from a war. Uh, I recommend feeding it to a vassal. Ideally, Thormund here. Um, reason for Thormund, 10% cheaper core creation cost. It'll make it easier for a vassal to take the land, and then you annex them later. Or you leave them as an Irish vassal. But the reason you can take Pale is because it counts as overseas from England, and because you're not going to be able to occupy or invade England at all. Uh, the forts will prevent you from taking any of this land. But if you take Pale, since it's overseas, does not count, and there's no fort here, so you can freely take it and then rampage through England, uh, through Ireland, and then into England. I recommend you either stay allied to Scotland, or you do what I do, which is uh, revoke the guarantee and then invade Scotland as well. There's really no reason to leave Scotland alive. They're not a strong enough ally just in Scotland on their own. Uh, plus, they're going to compete with you for colonization. Ideally, you want to kill up both Scotland and England to colonize. That's good. Um, the war against England is going to take a long time. So you're going to probably occupy all their lands in France and then invade Portugal, piece them out, and then just be sitting waiting for English liberty desire to tick down. Or um, not liberty, what am I saying? War enthusiasm. If you're really lucky, War of the Roses will fire during the war, and that will drop England's enthusiasm massively. Um, the only thing to watch out for is the rebels sometimes will pop up in these provinces. Kind of confusing. Uh, once the war's over, you're going to get an event with the Duchy of Alencon. Um, 
basically you're gonna uh, the game's gonna tell you hey do you want to release this as a subject I recommend you don't and you just annex them it costs you a stability but then you have to re-annex these guys later on um, not really worth it because it'll put you over your diplo limit as well unless you have no other allies that's one thing uh, once the war against England's over you ideally Brittany should be your next target um, you're going to have some missions here. Now we're, I'll go down these. So Reconquer Gascony is going to give you claims on this area and Provence, which is good because you're going to want to kill Provence later on. Reconquering Normandy, you won't get it all in the first war, which is not the worst thing because it's only going to give you an event. Um, so it's not a huge thing. Uh, the end of the Hundred Years War is nice, but you don't need it early on. Um, the bigger goal is to get the claims on Provence and to get into Ireland. But once you've done that, you've got a mission here to subjugate Brittany. Now, if you're a really good Europa player and you have the Diplo thing here, you should pretty much put your diplomats on outrage countries or neighboring countries at the beginning because your war against England probably won't give you too much aggressive expansion, but it will give you some. And the war to conquer Brittany is going to give you an absolutely massive amount. You probably will not be able to take all of Brittany in one war unless you take nothing else during that time and you're not conquering Ireland, which I recommend you do sooner rather than later because England will ally them. Uh, but anyway, once you conquer Brittany, you'll get 100 diplomatic power, which is really handy for annexing your vassals. You can't start annexing the vassals till 54. Uh, your first vassal should ideally be Provence. Uh, sorry, not Provence, Orleans. Sorry, I'm looking at Provence. Uh, mainly because Orleans is your richest and largest of your vassals. Some people would say leave them alive because you get six troops. I find the like 40 some odd development they have to be more useful. Because I ironically, not ironically, unfortunately, France does not have a lot of income early on, especially because we did the um, increased levies. Um, you're not going to be able to support a full army once you've conquered all this area and the forts. Uh, it might actually be worth uh, destroying one of these forts. You're going to pick up a couple ones. Putting a fort in Paris is pretty good. Putting one up here. This French border forts are rather bad these two are not bad down here but some of these are just weird you're going to want to go through and reorganize the french forts basically um once that's all done and you basically secured the british isles and you secured Brittany, that's when you want to start targeting provence um break your alliance with them if you get really lucky they die out and you get a union I haven't had it happen, but it can happen. Otherwise, you want to invade, conquer them. You ideally want to do it sooner rather than later because at some point, Burgundy is going to have their the Fate of Burgundy event um, where they have a chance of joining the Empire, going to Union under Austria or under Castile. Um, or they have a chance of joining you, but it's very low. And you're going to want to either invade and conquer Brittany, or sorry, Burgundy, and be in a good enough position to take over this land because you do want their land here. It's 40 development and it's part of the French lands in general. Uh, once you've done that, you've got other missions like conquer Calais. I uh, tend to take Calais in the first war so that uh, Burgundy doesn't get it. So I jump through that and then you get conquer Flanders, which is more invasion, but this is in the HRE, so it's going to be tricky to invade. Um, over here, though, you've got an England, you've got strengthen the old alliance. This might be why you'd want to stay friends with Scotland, but in order to get there, you have to build a dock or a dockyard in Finestry over here. Um, once you do, though, you get five heavy ships, which combined with your existing ones, um, almost, almost equal something of the English Navy. Uh, but you shouldn't need to because you should already have your army up in one of your armies in Ireland and just invade through Scotland. Uh, be aware that if you're going to do this, you're going to either want military access, have your army in Scotland, or the first thing you do at the war is to make this crossing. Otherwise, the English will just put their navy here and you'll never be able to get to them. Which is why I told you not to take all the land in France, because you want to declare war for the land in France and then invade through Ireland, because then you'll have a ticking war score. So even if you can't get to England due to a navy you will at least still win the war or at least not lose it 
Um, once you do that, you get the old alliance. Um, you got to have 100% uh, opinion of France, and you got to have Scotland at 100 opinion. And you have to have 70 development. But you get a claim on all the British provinces, which is amazing. Uh, you're going to want to use that to snag some of their higher development ones, London. Be aware, though, even though this is overseas, you're still going to get a ghost of expansion in Europe. So you do have to keep an eye on that. That's why putting your diplomats on outraged people is going to be key. It's going to take you a long time to kill England. Uh, I think I managed to kill England around 1520, and that was moving really fast. Um, but if you do kill England, you get France rules the waves, morale of navies, 10 for the rest of the game. It's nice. It's not a game breaker, so don't really worry about it that much. Uh, other than that, you start going down these missions, Annex Savoy, Annex Genoa, Conquer Milan, Recover Calais, Conquer Flanders, Conquer Burgundy, Subjugate Lorraine, Annex Alance. See, these ones are actually easier because if you've done Provence quickly enough, um, or you've got like a Union Conquest on them, uh, then you can get uh, Lorraine and uh, everybody just from a Union. It's nice and simple. Uh, you've got this Helveltic Conquest, basically conquer Switzerland. A lot of these missions right here, these dominate ones, are basically to simulate like Napoleon. Um, so don't try and do them too early. Unless you can break the HRE, attacking into the HRE early as France isn't worth it. France is one of those nations that, although good at the beginning of the game, gets much stronger as the game goes on. Um, but I will make a small mention here of Naples. So there's an event when the King of Aragon dies to fulfill his last will and testament, and there's a chance that Naples goes independent. If they do, there's a, I, a pretty good chance, I'd say it's like 60-40, that they will, at some point, Naples will put a French king on their throne. Basically, you'll get an automatic union on Naples, which is really nice. Naples is not a overwhelmingly strong nation, but it gives you a base to start expanding into Italy easier. So you get a mission to get all of Naples. If you get the Union, it's much easier. Because then all you have to do is conquer Milan. But then you get a mission to invade Restoration of Union on Castile, at which point you break your alliance and invade them. Hopefully, once you invade them, they've already annexed, uh, like, Aragon and stuff. So then you can just take over all of this. Once you do that, you're basically unstoppable. You kill, kill off Portugal and expand from there. Uh, in terms of colonization... So France is not the worst colonizer early on, but probably one of the lesser ones. They're not Portugal, they're not Castile, and they're not England. You're not going to get to the New World probably till Diplo Tech 9, even if you invade Ireland. You're just... The range just doesn't work right. You either have to get to Diplo Tech 9, or you have to get to Exploration Ideas 3 to get there, which means... Your first two idea groups, or at least your first one, should not be a colonial idea. I'd say your third should be a colonial idea. You'll still you'll get there a little late, but um, if you've killed off England, it's a lot less of an issue. So, for in terms of ideas, some of this is a matter of personal preference. Other is necessity. So, France has for its third idea, Elan, which gives you plus 20 morale of armies. Until you get this, the French army is no stronger than anyone else. In fact, it's weaker than England, Castile, and Burgundy, all of which start out with either 10% 15 morale or 10% infantry combat ability, which means you have to overcome that strength at some point. This is where you do it, Elon. So you have the choice of basically doubling up on morale, taking defensive ideas first, uh, any who's watched my stuff will know I'm a big fan of defensive ideas. You'll have plus 35% morale, 5% cheaper army, negative 30 fort maintenance once you get Vabon's fortifications, plus 20 fort defense, and in general, you're just going to have a very strong defensive army, which works for France because you're surrounded by enemies. <clears throat> uh, other people will say you should pick something else. So uh, if you're going to pick another idea group, I would recommend starting either admin ideas for the core, because you're going to be invading a lot of land up here. And 25% cheaper core cost is worth it. If you do that, make sure to focus um, admin power, because you want to get a large lead. 
that you can get to that idea group and still not fall behind in tech because that falling behind in admin tech early hurts because it unlocks your idea groups. So you really don't want to. Um, if you want to like annex your vassals, uh, take influence ideas. The negative 25% annexation cost is really good on that front. And in general, it stacks with your French ideas. It gives you like negative 25% liberty desire in subjects. You should never have any issues with subjects. Even when enforcing unions over like Spain and stuff, they really won't complain. It's quite nice. Uh, if you want a slightly more offensive France, uh, you could start offensive ideas, get the leader bonuses. It's strong. I would honestly recommend taking it mid-game rather than early game as France because... France really needs some military bonuses besides just morale early on. Some people say, well, you'll have the morale and you'll have stronger generals. <sighs> I'm a little iffy on that. I'd almost rather take quality ideas early on. Make sure you have a good navy because you are a naval power later game and the discipline. Then you'd have combat, discipline, and morale. Matter of personal preference, uh, if you don't want to annex all your vassals and you don't want cheaper coring, I would recommend you go either Diplo Ideas. Basically, Diplo Ideas is the other option. Uh, you could take Aristocratic, but why would you? It doesn't feel really worth it on France. Um, but it's viable. Just make sure you don't take Naval Maritime Ideas or even Exploration early on. You can't get to anywhere to colonize until you get to at least Tech 7 or so. You really need the... 115 range from tech diplotech 7 before you can get anywhere close to them uh, and then you're gonna obviously want to do exploration followed by expansion if you want to colonize you could just conquer the colonizers and like vassalize portugal and they'll colonize the entire new world for you and you can annex them uh, but that's a little bit of a pro gamer move where you don't actually colonize really anything you just use other nations to colonize for you and then you conquer them and make them your subjects and use them then uh, in which case you ignore both of these ideas and you probably go um diplomatic you'd go admin diplomatic then probably a military idea and then just keep conquering things so if you do that make sure you do do the um native trading policy and stack it with your native trading principles you get more productive provinces and you have no uprisings. You have some missions to do this. You have, um, basically it wants you to colonize North America, Canada, or Louisiana, which historically France had. Um, you gotta get five in the Caribbean first. So try and snag, ideally, the centers of trade in the Caribbean, but you're gonna get there late. So just any four or five provinces. Since you're probably going to be Catholic by that point, Portugal or Castile should have a colonial nation there, and so you'll offend the Pope when you do it. So at that point, it might be worth allying the Pope. Um, but really, the key is ignore it anyway. Colonize, you need those five. Once you've got those five, you leave it alone and move elsewhere. You want to snag Louisiana probably before you go for Canada. Um, let that start colonizing, because you've got events that can that basically say, oh, well, the Mississippi colony have the most power in Mississippi River and have 20 in colonial Louisiana. Um, it's a nice bonus. It's not overwhelmingly strong. If you have 10 provinces in South America, you get this little mission here. It's not really worth going out of your way. If you pull it off, great for you. Um, you also get reduced native uprising if you're kind to people. This can help here trade with the natives before you get... Uh, uh, native trading principles, but I, it's not really a big issue. Uh, you've also got this mission to invade Bengal. Basically, you get permanent claims on Orissa and Karnatic region, and then it wants you to keep invading like into China. Make, be aware that some of these claims are permanent, other ones aren't, so keep an eye on when you take the missions. And it wants you to invade into China, and if you do basically complete these missions, you'll get the um, Indian dominance, you get cheaper trade company investments, which is cool. And these ones over here basically follow down the political tree of France. You've got government reform. You got um, basically French wars of religion stuff. I am the state, which gives you absolutism. You can build Versailles, which is really awesome. You got to have a monthly income of 180% 
crown land ownership, so make sure you keep seizing land from estates once you have 40 crown lands, um, or once you have 50 um, loyalty. But be aware, the revolts are rather small. You just got to have an army to crush them. Um, once you go down there, you get Versailles, which is pretty cool. And then if you want to, you don't have to. You have the um, French Revolution, and you get some awesome modifiers. If you do go down that, you do get established client states, which you get plus two more diplomatic relations. France can have a massive amount of vassals and subjects to use in wars. Um, continue down this, subjugate empire, conquer Poland, you conquer Poland, and you've got the Russian campaign if you want to do better than Napoleon. And that's basically the French mission tree. Um, France does have a couple unique disasters. Um, obviously, the French Revolution is one, um, but you can avoid it. Just make sure you keep an eye on the price of bread and stuff. Hint, hint. Um, the French Wars of Religion here, you got to have less religious unity than 75%. It's a matter of personal preference how you handle this one. Um, if you want to be historical, you stay Catholic and you have to deal with this disaster, at the which, at the end, you'll get, I think, Edict of Nantes. Or I, I know I'm saying it wrong, so I know. Uh, it will basically make you more tolerant of heathens if you stay Catholic, and you can repeal it later um, for penalties. But basically it means if you have Edict of Nantes um, and you have Liberty, Egality, Fraternity, you'll be completely tolerant of Protestants as Catholics. I find, however, it's just better to convert to Protestant when it spawns. Protestantism is still stronger than Catholicism even with the update to Catholicism. I mean, it's not bad and you get some of these bonuses and you can be a popple controller and you get the golden bulls, which are nice early on. Um, specifically, the Cardinal Spread Institutions is handy, but you're in the center of Europe, you're France, you're rich, you're developed. You should be getting the institutions quick anyway. Quickly, sorry. Um, so swapping to Protestants, not a big issue. Now, you'd think that would immediately trigger this, it has a ticking modifier, and because you have a center of reformation in your land, you get a negative one. So you only have to get to 50% religious unity to stop the disaster. And if you convert immediately, the bull centers tend to convert your lands. So you convert like Paris and some of your other richest ones, and you're Protestant. You don't, oh, you avoid the religious disaster. You get all the wonderful bonuses. And that's not really an issue because you're going to be attacking everyone in Europe anyway. France is definitely a warmonger, but you can also play it peacefully and colonize as well. I think that's most of it. France has a lot of events, getting good advisors and getting free development in Paris. Um, when the Renaissance spawns, it's not a bad idea to develop Paris to at least 30, so you get the age bonus. And then slowly work it towards 50 over time. You do get events that give you development. But as you get development in province, the cost for developing it goes up. So developing it a lot early on is not a huge issue. Just make sure you don't fall behind in tech that much. Um, obviously swap your focus to whatever idea tree you're going for. You tend to have good errors. Um, just be aware there can be issues <laughs> with your dynasty. In fact, historical ones. Um, but... Uh... You've got some really good missions. France France might be my favorite mission. Um, you also, oh, sorry, I forgot this little one. You've got the Musketeers, Absolutism, get N military power. And then you can do this one, basically a barracks training field. You'll get hit less by plague events. And you get 10% manpower recovery. Never found the plague events to be a huge issue, though. So you should be fine. Uh, other than that, France does not have any unique government reforms. So basically, if you want to be historical, go heavily for absolutism. French kings were known as absolute monarchs. So that all works out very well. Um, I think that's basically all of it. There's France is relatively simple. Uh, once you win the war with England, you're super strong. You keep expanding. You're kind of like the Ottomans of Western Europe. Um, once you hit Elan, if you stack that with other military bonuses, you can beat armies. You're almost Prussia before Prussia, in some ways. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. 
tell me what other guides you'd like to see or any advice you would have that I missed. And uh, I'll see you guys all in another episode. Bye for now.